pipeline, power, our Sydney waterfall, SVP of growth at Refine Labs. How are you? I'm doing great. That was a hype up intro. I like it. <laughs> yeah, we're not messing around. It's power hour. People are <laughs> doing push ups, ripping shots. It's a, it's a crazy uh, it's a crazy day uh, here with Qualified. Um, we're super excited to have you on the show. We're going to talk about unlearning the marketing funnel. Uh, obviously the modern buyer journey has changed completely. H how do you think it's changed? Yeah, I think the, there's a lot of assumptions that we make with buyer journeys. We assume we know people and what their buyer journey should look like and then how it should map into a funnel, kind of try to reverse engineer that. But it's a lot of based on assumptions and Obviously, buyers have changed a lot in the last few years and will continue to rapidly change. So, I mean, when I think about the buyer journey, I like to focus on using first party data when I think about the buyer journey rather than um, other types of data sources out there. So um, I look at it as not in buying mode, which I can go into a subcategory there and then in purchasing mode. So not in buying mode underneath that huge bucket which is going to be the majority of probably your um, total addressable market that you're going after um, i want to look at are they brand engaged right so when i mean brand engaged are they actively like telling your brand i want to hear from you and letting you kind of distribute content to them in those different mediums um and then in purchasing mode, I think about it is they're researching your solution, your product, pre-declaring intent. And then once they declare intent, aka raise their hand, say, I want to have a sales conversation, that's kind of post-conversion. And then you have a lot of journey over there. And then you've got convert demand, expand demand. So those journey is huge. <laughs> Yeah, I like to think of it as like buyer's journey and learner's journey, okay. right? Where it's like this learner's journey of, uh, and they and they sometimes overlap, but sometimes they're very different. And I love the way that that you phrased it there, where it's you know someone who's not looking to buy, uh, that are they brand engaged? Because at the end of the day, like if 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 they have no idea who you are throughout that entire time, uh, it's going to be really hard to convince them uh, to take a sales meeting uh, when they flip the switch and say, yep, I'm ready to buy now. 100%. So if the funnel is out, then what's in? Ooh, this is a good one. So you really don't see any like persona specific kind of funnels anymore, or at least I don't really believe in like persona specific funnels. Um, so I like to think about like I said, not in buying mode, buying mode. And then once they actually convert, how we measure it is we understand how they're converting. So we call this concept pipeline sources. And if they're declaring intent, we call that a pipe conversion, it goes through our pipe framework. And we're understanding, okay, they converted, raised their hand, qualified meeting, high intent revenue opportunity and close. The other way we're looking at that is other ways that they convert so maybe they converted through outbound or through an event or through a um maybe like a abm or intent triggered outreach that was personalized and came in that way when we look at the same type of things across all of those uh, pipeline sources which is going to be the conversion the meeting the high intent revenue opportunity and then obviously close one so that's the simplified funnel that we like to look at. <laughs> yeah. And so sort of digging in there a little bit uh, into those measurements, you know, if someone uh, were to be a listener of the podcast, for example, or, or, you know, comment on something on one of your social posts that's in your buying persona, like what is that measured as? Yeah. So I would say that it's categorized in not buying mode and we look at brand engaged. So, Brand engaged could be they would sign up and learn from our brand. So, you know, you can't 
I don't think it's really realistic to go out and measure every single s social media comment. It's great that you're seeing those comments come in. That's like a lot of the qualitative feedback. But we want people to attend our events, sign up for our newsletter, um, give us permission to proactively distribute content to them. Um, and obviously we execute on a lot of dark social platforms and we run a lot of kind of dark social um, content distribution uh, methodologies so that we can drive people to becoming brand engaged. When you say dark social, uh, what is that? Yes, dark social. So dark social as a concept is um, where you would educate um, and distribute content on platforms and channels that cannot be tracked by traditional software attribution and also don't create third party intent. So think of podcast platforms like YouTube, Spotify, and uh, Apple Music, right? And also think of communities, private communities, social media, DMs, things where you'll never be able to actually capture a trackable touch point to the individual person. Um, all of that is considered dark social. Yeah. So for example, when, when I see one of uh, Chris Walker's videos on LinkedIn and I, and I DM it to someone on our team and go, oh, hey, this is awesome. He said this on Revenue Vitals. Like, you have no idea that I did that, right? Like you have nope. no idea that Ian engaged with this thing uh, and there's no way to know that right now. Um, but I am in fact now, you know, brain engaged. Yes. Um, and you, you know, you can't measure all of brand engaged. We rely on hybrid attribution and self-reported attribution to really understand how are these programs like podcast and LinkedIn and how are these even YouTube, uh, like YouTube shorts we're pretty heavy in. How are all of that actually yep. contributing and impacting our funnel? So, um, spoiler alert podcast makes up the highest percent of revenue for our business and has the highest win rate from um conversion to close one so great channel for us <laughs> yeah i mean you're preaching to the choir because uh caspian does podcast service so i obviously love to hear that uh, but that's what we see as well right is like these these very human centric type shows work really well for that uh and it's interesting that uh, that you spoke about uh, self-reported attribution. So we actually started doing this at Caspian uh, based off of uh, y'all's advice. Uh, I forget, I don't know, maybe a year ago. And guess what? A ton of our uh, uh, AdWords that we were paying for, when the person put where they found out about it, it wasn't Google, right? It was, it was hey, we listen to your podcast or hey, uh, we, you know, it was a referral from a friend or something like that. And if we hadn't have done self-reported attribution, we would have thought that all those leads were people searching for it in Google. And it turns out that they weren't. And I'm like, huh, that's pretty fascinating. And like the, and so I thank you so much for, for coming up with that and, and evangelizing the self-reported attribution. Yeah, hundred percent. We learn, um, it really depends on your persona, but we learn so much from that field because people will put in like four things. I started following yeah. so-and-so on a personal brand. Then I started following your actual brand. Then I listened to your podcast. And then I saw you present at this event. And you're like, okay, the journey's not linear, but at least I'm getting insights into how people are consuming and interacting with the content. Yeah, and if you're using like a listening tool, maybe that stuff comes up in your sales conversations. And that's great, mm -hmm. obviously great too. And hopefully you have both of those things. Um, but self-reported attribution shows you, uh, at least a little bit of a glimpse. And, you know, one of the things that, that y'all talk about is making it a mandatory field, which is any mandatory field is always a no-go, uh, uh, in marketing world. But, um, you know, and, and, and I think it's just given us a lot of insight there. So, uh, uh I think it's, it's something really interesting. Any other, uh, any other final thoughts on, on pipeline, uh, uh, as it relates to, you know, not having a funnel or this new, this new sort of uh, framework. Yeah, I just think kind of keep it simple. And especially when you're thinking about distributing content, you need to think about the content you're making. Is it right for your buyer? 
how valuable is it going to be, distributing that in the right way, and then allowing your buyer to engage with you on their terms, not your terms. And then when they are ready to engage and self-identify, you know, who they are and what they want from you, then to be able to track that through the funnel in a very simple way to understand what's creating demand and what is capturing demand. Sydney, thanks so much for joining. We really appreciate it and we'll talk soon.